Oh, thanks for having me on. Before we got back from the break, you and I were talking about the GDP numbers. You said that the revision down in Q1 was enough of a material incident when looked at the slow number in Q2 to make you think what? Well, well, first of all, they originally reported Q1 at two and a half. Now it's down to 1.1. So now they're originally reporting Q2 at 1.7. But I think they're going to revise it closer to zero by the time they're done. But the reality is the only reason the government was able to get a number as large as 1.7 is because they assumed inflation was 0.7 on an annualized basis, 7 tenths of 1%. I don't believe that for one minute. I believe inflation is much higher than that. And if the government used an accurate GDP deflator, we would already see that the U.S. economy is currently in a recession. And again, that's why the Fed never had any intention of tapering. It's bluffing. It can't tell the truth. It knows it's going to increase QE, but it can't come out and say that. So it's trying to build a foundation so later it can come back and increase QE, but it can't let on that that was its, its intention the whole time because it doesn't want the world to know just how weak the U.S. economy is and how dependent it is on ever-increasing doses well, of Peter, that monetary heroin. Peter, this Fed has never for a moment been shy about telling people that it was going to throw more money at this issue. Not at any point over the last four years have they backed away from QE or adding another uh, a level of QE to the situation. So what would make you think after an election they would all of a sudden assume, if you had any political bias in that statement, they would automatically assume that they could no longer go back to everybody and say, we will keep going on with QE, when it would seem like one of the motivations of both the Fed and the administration has been to give people an uplift in the market and the price of their assets. Why would they change their tune all of a sudden? But the whole time, the Fed has pretended that there was an exit strategy. The Fed can't pretend that it's QE forever, or the, the, Fed, the Fed can't let that cat out of the bag, because then the dollar will collapse, then the bond market will collapse. So the Fed has to pretend uh, that there's method to their madness when there's not. It's just madness. It's, it's the monetary roach motel. Uh, so earlier on, they didn't have to talk as tough. But now that they've been doing this for five years and they, they, they've created this illusion that the economy is recovering, they have to maintain the pretense that they can take away the QE. But that's like pulling the plug on a patient that's on life support. But, of course, you know, I think we've got to get rid of the QE because this is a phony recovery that's going to collapse eventually. And the longer we sustain it with QE, the worse it's going to be when we have to deal with the problems that QE is making worse. So, but, Peter, given the backdrop, though, you, I mean, you don't think that there's going to be any change at all and that QE continues. So tell me what you think you should do with gold. You should buy it. I mean, that's why I launched a gold mutual fund last week. It's the first time I've had one. It's a fund that invests exclusively pretty much in gold, gold and silver mining companies. Look, I think uh, the street has got this wrong. Whoever sold gold has made a big mistake. Whoever shorted it has made a bigger mistake, and they're going to find that out when they try to buy it back. Uh, but the world's got this wrong. The U.S. economy is not recovering. It's back in recession. It's going to go worse. Uh, the Fed is not tapering. They're going to increase QE. Inflation is not tame. It's there. It's going to get worse. And gold's going a lot higher. Peter, I just want to ask you, when you say that the U.S. is actually in recession right now, t tell me exactly what you're looking at. Is it because if you actually had an accurate GDP number, it would be zero? Is that, is that the number? Or is it jobs? Or what is it? I think okay. we just lost yeah, Peter, well, uh, what, but what a question, he right? He had I mean, no interest in answering that question. <laughs> yeah, but you he know, pulled the plug <laughs> on himself. You know what, though? It's interesting because over the past, I don't know, maybe six months at least, I mean, nobody's using the, the R word, Randy. Uh, I wouldn't say, is that the R word, That's Randy the, Cass? Yeah. I wouldn't say no one's using the Not R word. Not many, I really. Th I think there is a underlying uncertainty as to what is elevating the That's, market, what yes. is giving us this modicum of growth. And some people have the concern that the second you pull away stimulus, we will find that we're back at zero or less growth. Um, it's not a consensus call right now. It, it, is would, be, not. it would definitely be a contrarian All call. All right, so hopefully we'll get him back to find out some of those details.